Hi everybody, this is Jason. In today's tip, I wanted to show you one way you might test a console application. Console applications are notoriously uh, difficult to test just because they use a console write line, console read line, that sort of thing. So the very first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to expose the internals of our assembly to our test assembly. There's a special attribute that we need to add uh, to the assembly to let it know that we are going to allow the unit testing console apps dot tests assembly and you can add uh, the fully qualified assembly name there with the key and everything that is the only assembly that's going to be allowed to see the internals of this assembly and then we're going to need to add the internal keyword to the program class and we're going to need to make the main method public once that's done over in the test class we will uh, create a string builder that is going to act as a buffer for all of the output that the program generates. And then we're going to need to uh, wrap that in a string writer. The string writer is what the console can be redirected to. And so we're gonna redirect the console with the set out method of the console. So now every time a string gets written to the screen, it's going to be actually written to our string builder and we'll be able to read it from there. The other thing we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna to need to be able to pass in information as if a user was sitting in front of the screen typing things on their keyboard. And the way we're gonna do that is with a mock. We're gonna use the MOQ framework for that. Uh, we're going to mock a text reader, which is the base class of the object that the uh, console read uses, or read line uses anyway. And then uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create an instance of that mock, and then we're going to use the set in method to actually redirect all of the things that we have the mock generate back into the console. Hope that makes sense. Okay. Then the very first thing we're going to need to do is have a way to set up those user responses. So if you think about the way the sequence of things should happen, uh, if the user is asked for a certain type of information, they're going to type that in and the read line is going to return that back from the console dot read line. Uh, if they're asked for another piece of information, that's going to be uh, done in the same manner. And so we need our mock to be able to return different strings based on where it is in the sequence. And so we can pass in a sequence of strings that we want it to return, and then we can set those up to be returned in that specific sequence from the mock. All right. And then the next thing we're going to need to do is uh, we're going to need to be able to have a function that actually executes our program and then returns all of the output from that program. The output would be the strings that would have normally been shown on the console window, but instead they're going to be shown or they're going to be pushed into our string builder through the uh, string writer. So let's get to testing. Um, so you can see the set user response. You can have it send in any number of responses. So the very first time uh, our console read line is going to be called, it's going to return the word JSON. The second time it's going to be called, it's going to return the number 10. The third time it's going to be called, it's going to return the number 20. And I just put those in there as an example of passing more than one thing in there. We're going to create a really simple console app that just asks for our name, then it greets us basically. So it's going to say, uh, what is your name? We're going to type in Jim and it's going to say, hello, Jim, or something to that effect. Okay. And so the way we would create that with tests is like this. So when uh, main is executed, we want it to ask for the user's name. And so we're expecting that the program is going to say, what is your name? We're going to run the program and then we're going to check the very first line of output that the program returns and make sure that it does indeed say what is your name okay so now let's run this test make sure it fails because we haven't written any code yet and it does indeed fail and then uh so now the very first thing we need to do is have it pass that test and so we're going to say console actually you know what let's do this let's say for our username equals ask user for their name Okay, and then let's create that method. And we're gonna say console.readLine. 
and that's what the username is going to come back from, right? So username is that, but we needed to ask for it first. And so uh, let's say console.writeLine, and we're checking for what is your name, question mark. Okay, and then we're going to read their response, and then we're going to return their response back like that. And this is not an object, it's a string like that. Okay. And so let's go ahead and run our test again. And that should pass now. And it did because our very first line out of the program is what is your name? <laughs> All right. So let's go on to the next test. So our next test, we want it to greet the user when the name is supplied. Okay. So we're going to pass in, we're going to have the user type in the same information we did before. This was just a copy paste. And then we're gonna say that we're expecting a string that says hello and then the name, okay? So we're passing in Jason, it's gonna say hello Jason. And then the line that's going to have that is no longer the first line or zero uh, with a zero based index array. It's gonna be the second line Okay, which is index one of our array. So we're gonna check the second line, make sure that it says, hello, Jason, after we run. And we pass in the word Jason from the user, okay? It did indeed fail. So let's go ahead and that test pass. So then we're gonna say, uh, greet user, username, okay? And greet user is just gonna say console, dot right line and we'll use this here we'll say hello username like that okay all right so let's see if that passes and it does indeed pass okay very good let's think about what else we probably want to do some validation make sure they did actually type something in and so let's make another test for that uh, so it prompts the user again when the name is empty, okay? So uh, in this case, we're gonna set up our user responses. The very first thing they're gonna type in is a blank string, and it's gonna be empty. And then uh, we're gonna have them type in Jimmy this time, okay? And then what we want is it to say, what is your name? They respond with a blank string, and we want it to say, what is your name again? Okay, and so our expected prompt is, what is your name? But that's going to be the second line that comes out because they responded with a blank to begin with. The second line that comes out of our console app is going to be the same prompt all over again, okay? So let's test that and make sure that this test does indeed fail and it does fail. And so let's go make it pass. In the ask user for their name, what we really need to do is double check in here that they actually did type something in. So I think what I'm going to do is say string username is string that empty here. And then I'm going to say while username. So we're going to make sure that we're, gonna, we're just going to loop as long as they haven't responded with a valid response here. And valid is not empty according to our test. And so let's make sure that it's not empty. And then that should be good. And then we'll jump out of that while loop once it's not empty and we'll return the username like we did before. Okay, so let's go ahead and run our new test. Make sure that it passes. And it does not pass. What is your name? And we got an empty string there. Why was that? So while it's not empty, or no, while it is empty, that's why. While it is empty, we want to prompt. Details, details, okay. Now we should pass. All right, so let's make sure that all of our tests pass. So let's go ahead and run all the tests in our test assembly. And they do indeed pass. All right, very good. Well, this has been how you might want to test a console application. Obviously, in most console applications, there's not going to be this logic inside of the program class itself. You're going to want to encapsulate that, put it into its own class. Uh, however, 
if you have to test the console input and output, this is one way that you could do it by redirecting that into some variables that you can check in your tests.